just like normal, take a few deep breaths. All the cares of the world are nowhere near us right now. <sighs> We're feeling light. We're feeling ready in our bodies. And so I'll take a moment to introduce our intention for today. Um, this weekend I was out on a boat um, and while on the boat, you're, when you, when there's little waves um, from the wind or from other boats wakes that come by, your legs just kind of naturally wobble to help you have stability. And even just being on the lake for one day, I got home and the whole rest of the evening I had sea legs where I felt like I was wobbling even though I know that I'm on dry land. And so that's kind of where the inspiration for our intention comes from today. It's that intention of stability, being able to trust the earth to hold us up and being able to lift ourselves strong and tall and stable from whatever position we find ourselves whether this is um, kind of like a kneeling or a, a hand balancing position, or whether it's a standing balance position. We've got all sorts of fun things that we'll play with. Don't feel like you have to take too much stress about getting everything perfect, but just as long as we find that stability. And so as we, as we think of stability, um, we'll be playing with the feet, really spreading wide onto the ground to create a place where we feel safe, we feel strong, we feel stable. And so with that intention to carry us forward today, let's begin taking our knees into the chest, do a few little rocks on that sacrum, just a kind movement to get us started. And then from here, right away, let's plant our feet onto the ground and start to let the feet spread wide. Sometimes when I first plant them here, you know, I just kind of plop the heels down. The feet are kind of, maybe they're touching, maybe they're not even touching. But instead today, let them spread wide as if they're melting on a hot ground. So they're creating so much extra surface area. And so with that sensation being created, let's take some bridge poses. So we'll start to roll the hips up. The feet are what's pressing into the ground to help us lift. Hips go to a nice comfortable place. The feet are still pressing firmly. We didn't rock onto the outer arches just to lift. And then roll all the way back down. Take a few of those just at your own pace, mostly to find that stability in the feet. Notice other parts of our body that require stability in this posture, especially the shoulders. That's a grounded place. Rolling all the way down. And next time we rise, can you even create your hands to be a solid foundation, pushing even the whole palm into the ground. Notice how the lift becomes even easier when we're including that part of the aspect of this pose. So including all of this, the feet, the hands, the shoulders, let's take three more sets. Two. And one. Good, heel toe the feet wider, about as wide as the mat, and then let both knees fall over to the left. This is that fall in position that happens when the stability is taken out of the legs just topples over like this. So it's kind of fun to play with poses like this too. You have the option if you want to go deeper to take left ankle and rest it on top of the right thigh. Just getting that nice opening through the right side, the inner rotate, rotation of that leg. And drop left ankle down, both knees to the right. You have the choice to bring the right ankle up this time. Take 
other breaths. With the exhale, release the ankle. Do a few free flow windshield wipers back and forth. Ultimately, the knees stay stacked from here. Take another bridge pose, this time staying lifting up high. So if you didn't scoot the feet in, remember to scoot them back into the hip distance width. Staying up lifted. This time, clasp your hands under your back if you have the ability to reach there. And then the arms in this clasped position become that grounded spot. So we're trying to return the palms to the ground, even walking the shoulders under and feel how that whole new base helps us to lift to a new high place. Maybe you're lifting so high that the right leg is okay, stretching and extending, pointing up to the sky, and right foot down. Maybe left foot can reach all the way up, and down. Feel the feet returning with immediate stability. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release the hands, rolling back down. Right leg takes a brief stretch up to the sky. Grab on to help it out. Right ankle up onto left side for the hip opener. Clasp the hands around that left side. Right foot down, left leg takes its stretch, long leg up to the sky. And ankle onto the right thigh, clasp around it. Bring both knees into the chest. Just a simple twist, knees left. And then knees right. Good. Hips back to the ground, grab behind the thighs. Let's roll like a ball five times. And four, trying to find balance each time rather than letting the toes touch down. And three, nice boat pose. Two. And one. Keeping hands behind the thigh, try to straighten the spine up. Let the right leg reach up long, maybe even sliding the right hand closer to the ankle. And either keep the right leg here, adding left leg in also, or just take the left leg extended. Good. Either we're still in boat pose now, both legs even, or both legs straight. Either way, we're trying to keep balance for a little bit longer as we release the left hand, opening out to the left side like a twist, and return. Right arm opening. Return. Two more times each side. Left. And notice how you have to have the balancing, that rocking on your hip as your muscles try to find their stability again. Right, one more time each side, left, and right, good job. Tuck the heels in, knees go wide. We end up trying
traveling up and over into a nice cobbler's pose. Wonderful. From here, we sit up tall. The right leg stretches forward in front of us. The left knee pops up for a moment so we can take a twist. So hook the right arm at the hand or at the elbow and spiral the spine into that twist. Maybe left hand stays on the floor or maybe you try to go for that balance pose. The hand lifting up. Can you still have the spine lifting just as tall? Beautiful. Return back forward. Plant the right hand on the ground behind you. And then left hand in front of you sweeps forward, up, and back, lifting the hips into a nice supported bridge pose. Like a wild thing, half lift. Good. Returning down, allow the right thigh to open back to the ground. Both arms circle up to the sky. And then we let our whole spine release up and over the right leg. Good, spine returns up. Switch the legs out, left leg goes long. Right foot is planted. We take the spinal twist over that right shoulder. Is the right hand on the ground to help you twist? Or can you find the stability from within your spine to lift up tall and then let the hand float? Notice in this pose that stability can come from the hand, but it also can come from a deeper source within, that long spine. So that's another thing that we'll be playing with. Where does this stability come from? Good, so now as we return forward, plant the left hand behind you. The right hand swoops forward, up, and then lift the hips. Nice wild thing to back bend. Find the stability here, the feet and the hands on the ground supporting you in this nice structure. One more inhale, exhale, lowering down, Right thigh falls to the ground. Inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. And exhale, take that long leg stretch. Sliding the hands in, start to swing the knees underneath your body. Let's take a few cat cows, rounding vertebrae up to the sky. Dropping belly down, gaze up. Take a few rounds following that breath speed. One more cycle up and down. Spine comes back to a neutral place. And then let's play with the shoulder blades. So our gaze is not going up and down like we just were in the cat cow. Gaze stays forward. The low back stays steady, but it's just the shoulder blades separating and then squeezing together. So when the shoulder blades separate the upper back, is rounding slightly up. You can feel the shoulder blades creating lots of space on your back. And then the upper back goes down such that you can practically touch the shoulder blades together. So take a few rounds of that. Up and apart, down and squeeze. Three. 
two. And one. Good. Now, the reason why we did that one is because when we're trying to find stability in our plank pose, it comes from the shoulder strength when the shoulder blades are spreading apart from one another. So a slightly more rounded position in the upper back. Not that we're trying to get the middle back and the low back to do that. That's not the case. Just the very upper back, the shoulder spreading wide. So feel yourself already establishing that position and feel how by doing that, you can already engage the pectoralis muscles on the front, feeling that part contract to find the extra stability. So from here, let's bring ourselves forward into a kneeling plank, or maybe lift up the knees to a full plank. And then let's take 10 tiny little pulses, keeping the shoulders like this. So elbows bend slightly and then press back up. And here's nine. Doesn't have to be a huge motion. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good knees up or down, lower to chaturanga. Take a beautiful back bend. Spine arching as much as it feels comfortable to today. And then shift the hips back, a nice child pose. Feel how in this pose, practically no stability is needed. This is one of those resting poses. We have a few of them through yoga. Child pose is one, Shavasana is another, when we simply can release all muscular effort. Good. Slide the hands in, lift up to a nice kneeling position. Tuck the toes, and we're gonna feel the stability that can happen in camel's pose. If we're collapsed backwards in camel's pose, we run the risk of injuring our low back. So we find the stability by keeping our hands on the low, the low back, the, the back side of the hips, and keep that there until you feel like you can drop one or both hands down. If that's not the case today, keep your hands here. That's where the stability comes from so that our back is not injured by the nice arch. So hips push forward, keep them pushing. Squeeze the elbows together behind you for extra support. And then the heart lifts. Maybe the head goes back as long as the neck is comfortable. And you don't have to go any further. You're welcome to just simply stay here. But if it's easy to reach your heels, Drop them down and notice how the arms are still our support, whether we're on the hips or on the heels. Take two more breaths. And then head comes up, immediately find the stability again with hands on the low back. And then we can lift back up. Good. Heading into rabbit pose, just a little bit different than child pose. We start first by setting our forehead down onto the ground. If that means your knees need to go slightly wider, that's okay, that's great. So set the forehead down, grab onto each heel, and then hips start to lift. And what this does is round our upper back into that nice stretch. So shoulder blades should be pulling away from one another. This is one of my favorite stretches to get into that, that space right in between those shoulder blades. Good, hips sit back down. Arms can either stay tucked or arms can stretch forward. Beautiful. Come up to hands and knees. We're going to head up into finding the stability in our downward facing dog. For this pose, the 
blades. The shoulder blades shouldn't be rounding. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I see is a down dog looking more like, like this. Like ignore my knees for now, but kind of rounded forward. What this turns it into is more of that plank position rather than the strong structure through the shoulder blades. So shoulder blades in the ultimate position are neither squeezing nor rounding. We're trying to find just simply a lift with relaxed shoulders. So we're gonna play with that. The legs can be bent or straight today. Doesn't matter so much, we're, we're working on the upper body mobility. And so make sure every finger, every knuckle, every joint is pushing firmly into the ground. Nice and solid base there. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, and feel those shoulder blades, neither squeezing nor spreading, just right there in between as the hips are lifted super, super high. Legs maybe have a little bit of pedaling action to help the stretching out. And ultimately, if there is space at this moment to extend both legs straight, that's welcome. Take a nice inhale. Beautiful exhale. Let's begin to walk our way forward up to the top of the mat. Right away in the standing pose, the feet are spreading wide. Sometimes in dance classes, I would have the teachers tell us to lift up our pant legs so that you could see the bones. And if you wobble your feet purposely left and right, or even back and forward, you start to see little, but either the bones on the feet pop up randomly or the even in front of the ankle like left and right you can see that wobble and how the bones shift so that's one way that you can see if there's stability or not if you're not seeing any of the bones just pop up and then back out that means that your foot has stability you have lots of um, muscles working so that 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 quick little twitch doesn't have to happen so just kind of gazing at the feet, notice the stability, this groundedness, they're spreading so wide. And take three more breaths from right here. After the third breath, See if you can slowly bend the knees and then roll up without any of those bones popping out from the balance. So just feel that structure, feel the stability super long and wide. Good. As our head is now facing upright and forward, feel the feet just as solid in the ground. So from here, let's take our first standing balance pose, tree pose. Our weight shifts onto the right foot. Our left foot comes to the ankle, calf, or thigh. And notice, if you were to feel that standing foot wobble, all of a sudden those, those same bones and tendons start to just pop out to just have that last little spurt of, of muscle energy to help us balance. See if you can work without any of that motion. Your leg is solid and it doesn't need that wobbling. Posture's tall, gazing at something in front of you that's not moving. Good, one more nice inhale and exhale. Trying the second side, left foot's down, right foot comes up to its position. And take a moment to purposely wobble while you're looking at your foot so you can kind of see what's going on if your foot's trying to, to catch you. And then stop the wobbling. Feel the muscles of the feet take over with strength and structure, stability, as the rest of us just simply lifts. We're a statue, strong and tall. Another good inhale. Oh, exhale, drop the foot down. From here, we're going to swing the arms up. And then as we swing the arms back down, bend the knees and just let yourself take that whole gentle motion. Swing down the beat knees then, straighten again as they're behind and then swing up. 
just kind of a nice smooth motion. This is very calming for those feet that just had the work. Nice for the spine as well. Take three more sets. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Last one. <sighs> Good. With the arms already up to the sky, just simply reach them longer with a nice inhale. Exhale, forward fold. <sighs> inhale, half lift. Exhale, fingertips down, right foot lunges back, drop the right knee down. And then the hands come up onto this left thigh. Hips are sinking super far forward, feel that nice stretch. And feel how the points on the ground are our stability. The front foot, this right knee, and the right foot. All of these three points are what we have to work with. So notice, if they have to wobble or if we can get them to simply be strong, steady, surface area of foot spreading wide. Leaving the right hand on the knee, the left hand reaches up. And as it starts to arch back, open the shoulders to this side. Feel that nice twist. You're still able to keep balance in the legs for this twist. Good, slide the right elbow down. If you get past the elbow, bring the hands into a nice prayer position, accentuating the twist even more. But notice the feet need to stay in that stability, even while twisting. So take another good inhale. Exhale, unwind, plant the feet down. Stepping back, right into plank or kneeling plank. Feel the shoulder blades spreading wide away from each other. Shift forward past the fingertips, squeeze the elbows into lower. Beautiful arch. And perhaps a child's pose or maybe straight to the down dog. In the down dog, purposely spread the shoulder blades further apart and then purposely try to squeeze the shoulders together and then go right in between those two spots. The arms are directly overhead, right in between those places. Hips lift even higher because of the stability of the arms. And step, walk, or jump up to a standing forward fold at the top of the mat. Purposely wiggle your feet so you can see again those tendons starting to pop out to catch you balance. And then find stillness in the feet simply being right there. Take another good inhale. Another exhale. Bend the knees. Roll up without tendons popping in the feet. Good. Circle the arms up to the sky. And then forward fold. Half lift, long spine. Exhale, fingertips down, left leg lunges back. Drop the knee down. Hips sink forward, hands are up to the thigh. Notice if the front foot kind of rocks left and right to try to catch your balance. It's okay to do that at first, but then notice if you can find the nice middle ground, the spot without wobbles. Left hand stays on the knee, trying to not wobble or at least minimize it. Start to reach the right arm all the way up to the sky. As it comes behind you, your shoulders open to the side. Slide the left hand down. If you get past elbow, we're in prayer position arms. Notice the feet. Are they wobbling? Are those little tendons popping? Or can we be steady?
Good. Unwind. Plant the feet down, or the hands down rather. Shift into plank or kneeling plank. Shoulder blades spreading. Lower to the earth. Back bend. Down dog. Right away, finding that stability. Notice that hands and the shoulders are kind of building this muscle memory of where they need to go each time. Let's see if we can start working through the, the legs. So first things first, maybe the knees can straighten. Not everybody's to the point where they can get all the way straight, that's okay. If they are straight pretty easily, try to start dropping the heels down, getting as much surface area of the feet toward the ground as possible. And I stretch through the Achilles tendon, so the feet relaxing. Take one more nice inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, gaze forward, step, walk, or jump up to the top. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, bend the knees, roll up. Try not to get any, any little tendons popping. If they pop, start back over. Bending the knees, roll up. Feel the feet so stable, so strong right underneath us. Good. Let's do that same swinging motion, only this time, if your balance is there, you'll add a little hop at the bottom. So feel free to watch for the first one. Inhale, I reach my arms up to the sky. Exhale, I swing under and through as my knees bend. As my hands start to travel behind me, I hop and then rise back up. So a fast motion is like this. I inhale, exhale, hop, and then your feet land right away, finding that nice stability as you circle the arms back up. So you don't have to go super quick. Just take it with a nice slow breath. So when you're ready, let's do five cycles. Inhale, exhale, hop. Four, three, two, one. Good. Feel the strengthening of the feet, that nice structure that's going on. Here we're going to head into a nice eagle's pose. If you want to lift your feet up and down a couple of times, just to kind of help them find flatness in a nice relaxed, steady place. That's where we can do. And start to set the hips back. Pausing in chair, bring the hands to the heart. Trying to minimize the wobble so the tendons popping out of the feet. See if you can hook the right elbow to left thigh. Back up. Exhale, left elbow down. Back up. One more time each side, right, and left elbow. Good, stay in the squat. Try to minimize left foot wobble as right thigh crosses over left thigh, preparing for eagle. Maybe the toes wrapping. And if you need to purposely lift, wobble left and right so you can feel what's going on to catch you, that's okay. But then try to find stillness in the foot. Right elbows under left. Eagles pose. Three more breaths. Straighten the standing leg. Unwind the arms. The right knee comes up in front of you. Kick back through warrior three, trying to minimize left foot wobbling. You can even look at that foot. Landing warrior one, sweep the arms up to the sky, front knee is bent. Inhale, exhale, swivel open warrior two, maybe feet spread wider. Good, notice the back foot has to have the arch lifted. If you're trying to spread so wide that you've completely collapsed to the inner arch and the, the back side of the foot is lifting, you've completely sacrificed the integrity and the strength of the foot. So instead roll weight to the pinky toe, Maybe even shorten stance if you need to. Arms spread wide. Postures lifting up tall. And then take a reverse warrior. 
right fingertips to right leg, left arm reaches up to the sky, maybe even slightly backwards. Front knee is still bent. If you're here, the top arm can even come behind the head if you'd like. Maybe the right arm swivels around the low back so you can feel the, the rib cage stretch even deeper. A nice inhale. Notice that difference between the stability when the hands are supporting versus when the spine's being that support. Good, so from here, heading down to rest, the left elbow on the thigh, right arm forward. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, cartwheel back open. The back hand circles down, and then as it comes up, we're shifting up past warrior one into the, the heel even lifting, so more of a lunge shape. From here, we try to head to the twist. So the right wrist hooks, and then the left arm opens behind, or perhaps we slide to the prayer position on arms. Stability in the feet, minimizing the wobble. Circle the arms back up to the sky, a huge inhale. Exhale, hands flat down. From here, step this left foot back. We're taking a side plank. So left foot stacks on top of right. The shoulder stacks on top of the right wrist. Left arm tries to reach up to the sky. Three breaths. Two. One. Drop the hand down. We're in plank. Feel the shoulder blade spreading wide. Rock forward. Lower chaturanga. A nice back bend. Maybe pause for a break in child's pose. Or maybe head right up to down dog. If you're not there already, lift up to that nice, strong down dog, immediately finding all those things we've talked about. Hands spreading wide, shoulders in that nice, even space, hips lifting high. Maybe heels can drop, maybe not today. Feet relaxed, gaze forward. And step walk or jump up to the top. Feel the feet without wobble. Lots of structure, lots of stability. Bend the knees. Try to have no tendons pop as we roll our way up. Posture goes straight to a tall alignment. Feel the breath. Good. Another cycle for the other side. Bring the big toes to touch. Set the hips back, hands at the heart. Hooking left elbow, exhale. Return up, inhale. Hooking right elbow, and up. Once more each, maybe the hips can sit a little lower. Left elbow, and right elbow. Good, we're still sinking hips low. Left thigh crosses over. Maybe the toes are in kickstand. Maybe you're trying to go for the toe wrap around the calf. Notice if you have a moment of wobble, and then see if you can find stillness. We're not on a boat. We're on dry, solid land. Another full breath cycle. And then float this left knee up. Step back. 
through a nice warrior three. Try to minimize wobble. Landing with back heel. Circle the arms up to the sky, warrior one. Open up, warrior two. Find the stability, the knees opening, the inner arches lifting backwards on the back foot. Left hand drops to left leg, right hand circles up and back. Notice the strength of this pose comes from that arm stability. So if you'd like, right hand starts to circle behind the head, maybe left hand behind the back, continue to lean back but use that spine strength to lift and then lean to a good degree. One more inhale. Exhale, unwind it. Drop the right elbow down in the left arm for that nice shoulder opener. Rise back up for your two. The left hand circles down, and as it starts to go forward and up, pop onto the back toes, lifting the heel. So this, the hip's still sinking low, and we try to set up for the twist, hook the left wrist, or slide down to the elbow, arms in prayer position. Try to minimize wobble in the feet. They're working so hard for us. More inhale, exhale, circle arms back up to the sky and plant the hands to the ground. Step back, the right foot just rests on the left foot as we're coming into a side plank. Three breaths, two, one. Lower the hand down, shift forward, chaturanga back bend, child pose. Taking a moment with crow pose, trying to find one simple arm balance. This one's the, the most basic arm balance. It's a good one to try in these fundamental classes. So that way we can start building that stability through the hand, taking some of our body weight. You don't have to do anything intense like some of the other arm balances, but just trying to find the balance or even just finding the position with hands and feet down is okay too. So hands start to come in, planting, fingers spreading wide, planting about shoulder distance wide. From here, as we start to lift the hips up, set the knees onto the triceps. This can be your resting position from here, toes on the ground and knees resting. You're finding the stability here. If you feel brave enough to try rocking forward, maybe one set of toes lifts off the ground and then the other, Maybe you have brief moments with both. You don't have to stay too long today. Just three more breaths of playtime. And after that third breath, drop the knees down, tuck the toes under, try to sit all of your weight onto the feet unless that's too intense, in which case go forward a little bit. As we're sitting here, let's roll the wrists out. A nice kindness after that curl pose. This is helping to stretch our feet. When we're focusing on the feet being so solid on the ground, those muscles get quite a bit more fatigued than if we're just kind of doing the pose. So here we're gonna take some love for those feet, those structures that are helping us to, to move with balance, with steadiness all through our life. That way we don't take falls and break bones. If you're still doing okay with your feet, take one more huge breath, nice and slow. With your exhale, travel forward, roll the feet out, or maybe pound the tops of them out. Let's 
Let's come down to a seated position. Either full staff pose if you can stay tall like this or slide the heels in, the toes are still free. So either way, posture is nice and tall. You can even support your hands slightly behind you as we're focusing on the feet for a moment. And then let both feet stay together as we start to circle clockwise. So trace a clock face going right, down, left, and up as far as the, hand, the feet can move. Four more times clockwise. Three, two, one. And reverse it counterclockwise. Five, go through the whole range so that the feet get to move through all the muscles. Four, three, two, one. Now from staff pose, circle the arms up to the sky, forward fold. And then from the forward fold position, five times point the toes as far as they possibly can. And then flex the feet toward your face as, as much as you can pull them back. Here's four, point, and flex. Three, two, and one. Good, just find the feet resting in, in whatever position feels best. And our whole spine is releasing even deeper. Start to stack the vertebrae up tall again. Slide the left foot in for stability as the right shin tries to stack on top of the other. If this isn't working, we're still wanting access to the right foot. So maybe just spread the feet a little bit, the knees a little bit wider so you have a deeper structure available. Whatever is going on, we've got this right bottom of the foot exposed. So that way we can give it a little bit of love. So this might be your hands doing a little massage through the toes, the ball of the foot, the arch and the heel, or perhaps if you can reach the right elbow onto that left knee, perhaps we're setting up in prayer position arms with a nice spiral as our elbow takes circles all around the bottom of that right foot. Sometimes this helps us push even deeper than just the simple fingers, what they have the strength for, because this elbow is a, quite a bit of a bigger bone. So either way, we're giving that right foot a massage just a little bit longer. Just saying thank you for the structure, for the stability that it provides throughout our whole life, helping us to move without falling. Okay, as that starts to feel pretty happy on the foot, find the fingertips on the ground, spider walk them forward to a nice released position, giving the hips and the glute another moment to stretch out. Rising up, switch out the legs. So now we've gained access to the bottom of the left foot, whatever shape we had to do to get there. Maybe you're using your hands for that simple massage. Maybe you're hooking the left elbow onto that left foot. Hands in prayer position, start to move all around. Especially if you find good spots, just pause for a moment.
Two more good breaths. And then fingertips on the ground, start to release forward. Rise back up. Let's find ourselves returning down onto the ground. Either finding a pose where we're taking the knees into the chest, rocking around a little bit, or perhaps taking full happy baby pose. If you're here, you're welcome to rock around to massage the spine. That spine is that other important point of stability. back is feeling nice and comforted on the ground. So let's start to release the arms and the legs into a place of comfortable support. Whether that looks like a normal Shavasana, arms and legs open and corpse pose, or maybe arms and legs are taking a different shape, such as keeping the feet planted. As we're transitioning toward our Shavasana, we're transitioning from the physical stability we got to experience through the body all throughout class. And we're shifting, we're transmuting toward a deeper kind of stability, asking ourselves, how is the stability in my life? Do I feel rooted? Do I feel grounded? Or do I feel like any floods and winds and tornadoes that come into my life will just ruin everything. Can we find ourselves calm amidst any storm as if we're in the eye of the storm? That peaceful center where nothing can tip us over. So pondering the stability in your life, let's simply find this quiet, calm peace as our breath flows in and out of the body for the next few minutes.
begin to deepen the inhales and exhales. Introducing little movements into fingers and toes, ankles and wrists. Stretching out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Eventually taking a nice fetal position off to one side. And doing a nice deep inhale. Long, slow exhale. And find the hands pressing into the earth, helping our spine lift. And then find the strength of the spine, allowing us to be tall, upright. Feel that lumbar curve, the curve that makes the, the back have that small arch. Feel the thoracic curve, the rib cage slightly arching the opposite direction. And then feel the back of the neck, taking that curve backwards once again. Those three curves of our spine, the three arches, creating that strong stability. Feel the breath easily flowing into the body. Hands can join together in front of the heart. And perhaps we've come to a small conclusion, one small step we can take to help us feel the stability in our life. So it doesn't feel like we're on a boat constantly rocking, trying to fight for our balance. Instead, we're on the solid ground. We have our land legs instead of our sea legs. So with this small step forward to head us toward greater metaphorical stability, let's wrap up the time we got to share together with the sound of an ohm. Take a deep inhale now. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.